David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another stay at home fountain pen review. Uh, you might have noticed, but last week I actually got my hair cut. Uh, it was a real family project. Everyone in the family had a hack at my hair, including myself. Uh, I think I'm going to keep the beard for a while, though. This could be my quarantine beard. Uh, you can go back in time and see it grow as the quarantine uh, gets longer and longer. Uh, now, back to pens. While I review a large number of higher priced pens, I do like to mix things up a bit and take a look at more reasonably priced pens as well. Uh, the pen I have for you today definitely fits into that budget category. Uh, it's a pen by the Japanese company Muji and is simply called the Muji Aluminum Fountain Pen. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Muji fountain pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, Muji was founded in Japan in 1980, and their retail stores offer a wide variety of products, including household goods, apparel, and food. Uh, the name Muji is short for Mujirushi Rohian, uh, which translate as no brand quality goods. So the goal of the company is to provide high quality, low frills product. Uh, I've been in one of their stores. It kind of reminded me a lot of the housewares section of Ikea. And here is the pen, the Muji Aluminum Fountain Pen. Uh, it is indeed made from aluminum, and it is a little bit on the thin side and has a rather simple and minimalistic design. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the top of the cap. Uh, the portion in the middle of the circle here is a plastic or hard rubber. Uh, this transitions into the clip, which like the rest of the pen is rather thin. Uh, it's functional though, and I feel it is size appropriate for this pen. If it were a, a larger, more standard size clip, I feel that it would be out of place here. Uh, there is no cap band, uh, and there's no branding on this pen whatsoever. The cap transitions smoothly into this knurled section, uh, which then transitions to the remainder of the straight, thin barrel. Uh, then the end of the barrel is flat and has a circular insert similar to that of the cap. Uh, but there's one small difference here which I will go over in just a bit. The cap slides off. It's a very light snap. Uh, and the end of the cap has a small step down and that portion kind of slides into the recess around the section. I like that. Uh, underneath the cap, we have a rather small stainless steel nib. Uh, it is made by Schmidt and is fairly equal in size to what you find on a Caveco Sport. Uh, while it is on the small side, I feel it's appropriate for this particular pen. Uh, and I believe that this nib is only available in fine. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is a bit odd. It begins with a small rounded ridge used in the capping mechanism, and then there is a step up to the knurled portion of the section. Now, I've always been fond of knurled sections, and this one feels very nice. The issue for me is that I tend to grip my pens toward the end of the section. So while the knurling helps provide a secure grip, I'm always playing on the edge down here. The drop off is rather steep, and the edge is slightly sharp. So you want to grip it off of the edge, which for me takes some getting used to. The Muji is long enough to use unposted, but if you care to post it, the cap actually slides into the crevice encircling the end of the barrel. Uh, the cap is very light, and so it doesn't backweight the pen or throw off the balance. And I don't feel it adds an inordinate amount of length to the pen. So uh, even when it's posted, I don't find it to be unwieldy. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and converters. A single cartridge is provided, uh, but a converter is not. This standard international one here was a spare that I had, and it works just fine. This was a pen, I will admit, I really never gave a chance. Uh, it was purchased years ago, and I quickly moved on to other things. In revisiting this pen after not using it for so long, I was impressed. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample, but while I typically don't prefer fine nibs, I find this one to be very pleasant and not sharp at all. Uh, it makes me regret not spending more time with this pen over the several years that it's been in my possession. Uh, with this pen being aluminum, uh, eye dropping it would not be recommended. Um, I feel this pen provides a great deal of value for the price. 
Speaking of the price, the Muji Aluminum Fountain Pen is available directly from the Muji site for $16. I've seen them up on Amazon as well for around $23. So if you are in the market for a starter pen, or if you just enjoy more budget conscious pens, then the Muji Aluminum Fountain Pen is something I would highly recommend you check out. Now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Muji Aluminum Fountain Pen. Uh, here it is with a Lamy All Star. Here it is with a Twisby Eco. And here it is with a Twisby Go. In regard to a couple of other pens, we have a Caveco Sport, a Pilot Metropolitan, and a Pilot Prera. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the All Star and the Metropolitan and the Eco. So here we go with the writing sample for the Muji Aluminum. fountain pen. This is a fine stainless steel nib and the ink I'm using here today is Diamine November Rain. Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Uh, Diamine came out with a series of rock and roll themed inks that were at one point exclusive to Germany. I'm not sure if they're available outside of Germany now. Uh, and that uh, November Rain was one of them, uh, which is a famous song by the band Guns N' Roses. Uh, here it is. Uh, in comparison to Colorverse Schrodinger. Uh, and then here it is with the Emerald of Shivor, which is a little bit more blue than green. But you can see here that it's a nice kind of dark green with some reddish sheen to it. This is what the bottle looks like. Uh, I've always liked Diamine's 80 milliliter bottles, uh, really large mouth on the bottle, and it's very easy to get uh, sections and nibs of any size in here. I have seen Guns N' Roses a couple of times in concert. Uh, probably the most memorable time was uh, in San Diego. Uh, Soundgarden opened up for them and played from about 8 o'clock to about 8.45. And then the waiting game began. You were never quite sure when Guns N' Roses were going to take the stage. So, uh, you know, 9.30 came around, 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock came around. Uh, and finally at 11.30, after making the, uh, the about 13,000 people wait, for several hours, Guns N' Roses finally came on the stage and, uh, and then proceeded to play for three hours until about 2.30 in the morning. Uh, it was a very memorable evening. Though I wish they would have been a little bit more courteous of our time at the beginning. I, don't, I think I could have done without us sitting around for two and a half hours waiting for them to come on to stage. Okay, in regard to the rest of the writing sample... Uh, you know, I find this me or this fine nib to to kind of be on more on the medium side of fine. Um, I don't find it to be sharp. It's not necessarily smooth. Uh, it does have a fair amount of feedback to it. Um, you're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. Uh, in regard to ink flow, it's a little bit on the low side. In regard to some reverse writing. It is a little bit scratchy, but it does get the job done. And in regard to some fast writing, I, 
I had no issues whatsoever. So there we have the Muji aluminum fountain pen. Uh, if you're in the market for a budget pen uh, or just uh, uh, something a little bit different, then uh, this is something that I would recommend. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of uh, regretting that I didn't spend more time with this pen. So I'll have to spend some more time with it in the near future. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.